Hello, my friends, hello, and welcome once again to the stately Vaughn Manor. And it's already time to do my April wrap-up. How did that happen? So, April is history. April 22 is gone. Goodbye, April. So, we're going to talk about what I read in April. And if you saw my wrap-up last month, my March wrap-up, I said I was going to read a bunch of books, which I didn't end up reading. I read different books. That happens sometimes. I will explain. And so I'm going to talk about the books I read in April, and I'm talking about the books that I'm going to read in May, because this is horror mayhem this month. I've been waiting for this reading event created by the Bookish Bryants. I've been waiting for this one, Horror Mayhem, a whole month of horror. Uh, so, yeah, so Horror Mayhem created by the Bookish Bryants. I already did a video about the stuff I'm going to read, but I'm going to change it up a bit because you know how I am. And, you know, it's mayhem. It's absolute mayhem. So, you know, I threw a few extra things in there. And I'm hoping I have a better reading month this month than last month. Last month, I was supposed to have a great reading month. I had a vacation for a week, but then I got up to the Rustic Vaughn Lodge and there had been a windstorm and the windstorm blew the roof off my barn and it also knocked a tree down, which, which knocked, knocked over a fence, my fence, and it caused some other trouble. So I was busy. Uh, I was busy on my vacation, so I didn't have as much reading time as I wanted. It was kind of like just another work week, actually. All that extra time I thought I was going to have, I didn't have. That sucks. I'll stop complaining now. Let's talk about the books that I read in April. So I left this book at the lodge for some reason, uh, but I had a physical copy of this. This is Cujo, the first book I read in April. And this I did a whole video on. I like this book a lot more than I thought I was going to. I had read this once before when I was 17. Much different experience reading it this time. Uh, I liked it a lot more. Uh, I like the character work in this book. I, I love the suspenseful parts in this book. It was actually, frankly, scary at times. Uh, it wasn't the perfect Stephen King book. It wasn't his best book by a long shot. There's some stuff wrong with Cujo, but I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed Cujo a lot. So yeah, Cujo. I had a good time with Cujo. Uh, of course... I forgot to bring uh, all the books I was going to read, except Cujo. So while I was up there, I had to find something from the uh, Rustic Von Lodge bookshelf, which is really small, but I did find one that I've been wanting to read, and that was The Good Old Stuff. Adventure in the SF Tradition. This was edited by... Gardner DeZois, Gardner DeZois, I'm hope I'm hoping I pronounced that correctly. It is a fantastic, rock solid anthology of science fiction adventure type of stuff, and also you know it's not just that it's not just space opera. It's there's some good quality stories in here, and it's no surprise because look at all these writers who are in this book. Uh, it's a fair-sized anthology. What is this? 430-something pages. So it's a good anthology. And I brought it home because I'm going to send it to a fellow booktuber in a care package I'm sending out on Monday. I won't say his name because I don't want him... I want him to be surprised. Uh, yes, I'm sending it to... I'll give an alias. Mavid Biley. I'm, I'm sending it to Mavid Biley. Um who I'm sure will be shocked when he gets it with all the other stuff I'm sending him. So yeah, the good old stuff. I enjoyed this one a lot. I've been wanting some vintage sci-fi in my life, and these are all vintagey, old-timey stories, so this was good stuff. You know, I also, let me just throw in the comics that I read before I forget. I read this one, Marvel Superheroes Secret Wars, a miniseries that was based on a bunch of toys, and it shows... I, I liked it, but uh, it had some consistency issues with the artwork and some other things. I did a whole video on this, but it was Epic Comic Book Wednesday, so you probably didn't see it because nobody sees those videos. Uh, 
That's okay, I'm not bitter. Anyway, I also read this one, uh, Avengers Forever. Uh, and I did a series of videos on this because it was a read-along, along with Matthew at Mayberry Book Club and Steve Donahue. That was fun. I had a good time with that. What else did I read this month? Oh, yes. Mickey Spillane. I read some Mickey Spillane. I read I, the Jury. I, the Jury by Mickey Spillane, which is a pretty trashy uh, detective novel, which was a lot of fun. There was a time when Mickey Spillane was one of the most popular writers in America. Uh, and I can understand that. This was some heavy stuff for the 50s, man. Lots of sex and violence in Mike Hammer books. Mickey Splain's Detective Mike Hammer. Uh, and I, I, the Jury was the first Mike, Mike Hammer story. A novel he wrote, like, super fast. I, don't rem I forget how fast he wrote it, but he wrote it pretty quick. And it was good. It was a good book. I enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot, actually. I mean, it's trashy, but it's good trashy, if you know what I mean. Uh, so I think I'm going to be reading another Spillane for Garb August, Criminali's reading event in August where we read trash. Because <laughs> there's this book was kind of trashy, but it was good. It was it was a lot of fun. Uh, a, you know, a pretty solid detective story, actually. And he's not a bad writer, Mickey Spillane. He's not. I enjoyed it. So I, the jury, I had a good time with that. So that was that. And then I just read a really good book, Ghost Story by Peter Straub. This was excellent. I, I, I knew this was going to be good, although it has gotten some mixed reviews from different booktubers. But I, I've seen enough to know that this was going to be a good book. And fortunately, I didn't know really what the story was about. I just knew it was a ghost story. Well, it's not really. It's even cooler than that. The supernatural menace in Ghost Story is fantastic. This is a beautifully written horror novel. Really creepy. This has just some eerie, creepy moments in it. The character work in this novel is pretty good. Most of the characters are, are, are done really well. Uh, and... It was suspenseful. It was uh, it was just an excellent horror novel. Written in the M.R. James tradition, these kinds of ghosts, or these kinds of supernatural, whatever they are in this book, they're very much M.R. James kinds of supernatural beings. The, the beings in M.R. James stories, he's a classic ghost story writer, but his ghosts aren't just, you know, your run-of-the-mill average ghosts. M.R. James ghosts are dangerous. You run into one of these ghosts in an M.R. James story, you're in trouble, man. <laughs> if you run, a, run afoul of the supernatural whatever it is in a James story, man, watch out. Uh, and this is very much in that tradition. Um, and so it's very Jamesian. And uh, it, it's a fairly good-sized novel, and it manages to hold the suspense and the horror pretty well. The more you learn about the supernatural being, kind of the less scary it is. I mean, I guess that just happens. That's just something that can happen. Uh, you learn a lot about what this thing is that, it, that is terrorizing the people in this novel by the end of this book. And as it goes on, it does become less frightening. Although it kind of redeems itself as far as that is concerned because it has a great ending, I thought. I really like the ending of this book. Uh, there's kind of a framing sequence in this book, which is really creepy. Um, there's a lot of great things about this book. Uh, so Ghost Story by Peter Straub. Excellent, excellent book. So that's what I read. What am I going to read for Garb... Not Garb August. What am I going to read for Horror Mayhem? I've got to not confuse my reading events. Horror Mayhem! So the first week of Horror Mayhem is going to be 
supernatural creatures of some kind. They could be ghosts or monsters or whatever. Bigfoot, anything. Uh, so monsters are supernatural creatures, basically, for the first week. Uh, I already said I was going to read this, and I'm going to, but first, this is The Werewolf of Paris by Guy Endor. But first, I'm going to read this. In fact, I've started this already. This is The Forsaken Boy by Troy Tradup, or Tradup. I still don't know how to pronounce his name, but this book is really good so far. I've just started it, and it's excellent. I'll probably finish it, like, tomorrow. Because it's that good. It's uh, an excellent novel so far. The Forsaken Boy Werewolf Novel. And that's a, actually a good cover, too. Um, yeah, good choice for a cover. I like that. So, excellent werewolf novel so far. The Forsaken Boy. And then I'm going to follow it up with more werewolves. Guy Endor's The Werewolf of Paris, which probably read quite differently. differently. If I have time this week, and I probably will. I can see myself tearing through those. I'm going to try to sneak this in here. Ramsey Campbell's Demons by Daylight, because I'm dying to read this book. Uh, I want to read more Ramsey Campbell, uh, and this is supposed to be one of his best collections of short stories. Look at that. How cool is that? This is awesome. So, Demons by Daylight, going to read this. So that's the Supernatural Week. That's this week. And so then we have Gothic. And so for Gothic, I'm going to read Haunted Castles by Ray Russell, uh, the complete Gothic stories of Ray Russell. Uh, I've been wanting to read this one for a long time too, and what a great opportunity. Uh, this is one of the Penguin Horror Line, one of the books from the Penguin Horror Line. I love these books. They've got the black edges. And, ah, they're just awesome. I love these books. So yeah, I'm reading this one for the Gothic Week. If I have time, I'm not sure I'm going to, but if I have time, I'm going to sneak in some Edgar Allan Poe because it's, it seems like for Gothic, you really should read some Poe. And I've got The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe, which, you know, I've read before this book, but I've read everything Poe before. So, you know, I'll sneak some in there if I can. Then it's Cosmic Horror. Cosmic Horror. H.P. Lovecrafty kind of stuff. For that, I'm really looking forward to this book, A Lush and Seething Hell by John Horner Jacobs. This is two novellas in here, A Lush and Seething Hell. I forgot to mention that for Horror Mayhem, it's basically short fiction or shorter novels that we're reading, under 250 pages. A lot of what I'm reading is short uh, short stories, although I cheated that first week. That's okay. But definitely want to read this one for, for uh, Cosmic Horror. It says Two Tales from, of Cosmic Horror right there. I've never read anything by John Horner Jacobs, so that should be fun. But if I have time, I'm going to throw this into the mix as well. Uh, this is The Whisperer and Other Voices by Brian Lumley, because I want to read some more Brian Lumley. He's great. And these are, this is a very shiny book, damn. And these are his Lovecraftian stories, I believe. I believe these are all his Lovecrafty's tales. And, or some of them, anyway. I think he, re he wrote quite a few. So yeah, I'm going to try to horn in some Brian Lumley for Horror Mayhem. Then it's Folk Horror. I've only got one book chosen for Folk Horror. That is Weird Woods. Tales from the Haunted Forests of Britain, edited by John Miller. So, yeah, I only have one folk horror for the last week of the month, and that's because no matter how else the, the month goes, I want to close off with this. This is Women in Trouble by R. St. Clair. She's got a bunch of stories in here, which I think kind of run the gamut between all of these, uh, or at least a lot of these... Um, categories. That's the word I was looking for. And so I've heard great things about R. St. Clair, and I really want to read this book. I probably would have read it already if it hadn't been for me waiting for Horror Mayhem. This looks like a great Horror Mayhem choice. So, Women in Trouble. And that's everything on my TBR. We'll see how I do 
We'll see. And uh, this week, as far as videos, it's going to be a mess. Uh, tomorrow is normally uh, the Robert E. Howard Show, but it's not going to be the Robert E. Howard Show. That's going to be on Tuesday. Uh, this was supposed to be today, the Sunday Penguin, and obviously it isn't. Tomorrow I've got another video uh, about Horror Mayhem, where I'm talking about some great short stories which you could read for Horror Mayhem. And then should be the Robert E. Howard Show, and then a bunch of other stuff. Okay, guys, I will catch you next time.